Maddox and the Braves allowing eight runs in game two only three of which were earned one ball one strike that's a lane you'll be seeing all day long from Maddox it's Primrose Lane for him one ball one strike a little low two balls and a strike I know you guys believe this hitters against Glavin more times than not will swing and either get themselves out or swing and miss at pitches out of the strike zone more so than any pitcher on this staff more than any pitcher in the National League Tom Glavins gets outs with balls off the plate not strikes Clayton a base hit into center field and a good start for St. Louis. Here's what we were talking about on the double by Lopez. There's Ray Lankford. There's Ron Gant. The reason that Gant plays this, in my opinion, cautiously and conservatively, is if the ball gets by him. You see, he's making the play. Had that ball come up here, Lankford is committed to feel the ball, and Lankford has a torn rotator cuff. And if he feels the ball, then I think third base coach Jimmy Williams sends McGriff instead of Holsey. Here is Langford with the bad shoulder, takes a strike over the outside corner. So the Cardinals played it that way and won only because Jermaine Dye, the next hitter, lined right to Royce Clayton to end the inning. Clayton is on at first here in the bottom of the first. And the 0 1 to Langford. Hard to believe that Ray Langford is six out of his last eight against Tom Glavin. A lot of people around the league believe that Glavin is much tougher against right handers because he can work that outside corner with the sinker. It kind of takes that pitch away against the lefties. Right. A ball and a strike on Langford and a check on Clayton. 14 runners have tried to steal second this year. Seven have been successful. Only four stolen bases against Donovan Osborne and only seven against Glavin. In our Fox box, top left hand corner of your screen, red dot on it first, indicating Royce Clayton here in the bottom of the first. The Braves out in front by one. Late cut, strike two on a good fastball from Glavin. A red dot rather appropriate in this ballpark. Absolutely. I mean, have you ever seen more red clothing in your life? Oh, man. It was an intimidating sight in 87 when the Giants came in here to play the Cardinals in the NLCS and 50,000 people plus all wearing red. They want to see something out of Langford. Clayton at first, nobody out. Saved by Lopez in a 2 2 count. Good play by Lopez. What he did, it was a slider and he glided to where he thought the slider would be. You go with it. Good play. As a catcher, you always anticipate a breaking ball going in the dirt. The right. one most catchers are going to have a problem with is when a guy uncorks a 90 mile an hour fastball in the dirt because you never expect a pitcher to throw a fastball in the dirt. 2 2 to Langford, now a full count. Gant waiting on deck. Interesting running situation right here. Tony La Russa realized Ray Lankford 140 strikeouts this year. If you are going to run, you have to make sure Glavin pitches. You cannot get picked off in this situation. 3 2. Runner was going in a pop up into shallow left. Tough play. Blouser, great play for the Braves. The only one that could get there, Blouser covered a lot of ground and took a blue pit away from Langford. We talk about base runners who have to check the outfielders. Infielders defensively have to check and know how deep their outfielders are playing. Blouser, knowing Andrew Jones is playing deep, makes the play himself and avoids a collision. Little juggle at the end of it, Blouser able to hang on. And with one on, one out, the batter will be Ron Gant. And a strike over the outside corner. 
Just keep an eye on Javier Lopez throughout this ball game after he gives the sign how many times he moves out and splits that outside corner with the middle of his body. There he goes again. This time it misses one ball one strike. Leo Mazzoni telling us before the game that most pitchers never give in to a hitter. Tommy Glavin never gives in to a strike zone. Moves Gant off the plate, two balls and a strike, and there's one of those early pitches to a right-handed hitter to at least keep the Cardinals honest. And keep account of how many of those you see, but that is the pitch that has earned the respect of right-handed hitters throughout the National League. That's why more guys don't cheat up on the plate, cheat up in the box, and look away on Tom Glavin, because every now and then he'll run that one right in on your hands. Two balls and a strike and a check on Clayton is going nowhere. Yeah, another thing Leo Mazzoni said, never give in to the strike zone, and Glavin continues to remind himself during the game, stay stubborn. And what that means is do not throw strikes. Stay stubborn. A 3 2 count. Now he's behind with Gant, 2 and 1. Staying stubborn and missing low and away, 3 and 1. Now you have to come to Gant or put two on, and there's where Ron Gant likes it inside. And the blue zone is where Tommy Glavin has consistently tried to pitch him, with the exception of that one cut fastball inside. 3 1 count here. It looks like Glavin may have to come to one of those red zones. One on, one out. That is hit a ton. Two to one, St. Louis. is a strong strong man you look at him in that uniform and you don't realize how powerful he is but he showed everybody in this ballpark what he can do with a mistake pitch Ron Gant gives him a curtain call he has had some postseason that's his second home run he came in seven out of 19 had a huge game against Maddox and the Braves on Thursday. Now Jordan a one ball one strike count. Gant had three hits including an RBI double against Maddox in that 8 3 St. Louis win. Well, so much for taking the crowd out of the game huh. <laughs> <laughs> this place erupted as soon as Ron Gant made contact with that fastball. And now with one out nobody on the bases have been cleared a 1 1 count on Jordan. Falls behind, or I should say, Glavin, two and one. Ron Gant has given this crowd of better than 57,000 here in St. Louis something to smile and cheer about. Three and one now on Jordan. Ron Gant has the Atlanta Braves seeing red in the red. Now the 3-1 to Jordan. Full count. And you can see from where Javier Lopez was set up, they were still going to try to work the outside corner on Ron Gann, even with the 3-1 count. But Lopez had to come back to his left towards the middle of the plate. The damage was done. Full count on Jordan. Off the hands, it'll stay full.
Leo Mazzoni and this Atlanta Braves pitching staff getting a stiff test from the Cardinals. Now Jordan pops it up on the infield for Lemke. He struggles at times with pop ups, does not have the best eyesight, has a difficult time with plays such as those, takes care of it. Two out here in the first inning, and the batter will be Gaetti. From near and far, they applaud Gaetti from Centralia, Illinois, which is just across the river. Grew up a Cardinal fan, of course. After that, grew up a Minnesota Twin. Came here in 1987. Twins won the World Series from the Cardinals. Gaetti, a swinging bunt rolls foul. And the count one and one. You know, a lot of players would probably hesitate to admit it, but I think that's got to be one of the biggest thrills and something you would really look forward to. Coming back to your home team, the team that you grew yeah. up rooting for, yeah. I think that has to be a huge thrill for Gary Gaetti. It was the seventh inning in game two. Two out, bases loaded, hanging slider from Maddox, and Gaetti knew what to do with it. The fifth NLCS Grand Slam and an 8 3 Cardinal win. Interesting article in the St. Louis Post Dispatch about Gary and his parents, Bill and Jackie, who still live in Centralia, watching the game the other night. And Bill telling Jackie that Gary, you know Gary's going to swing at the first pitch. And <laughs> sure enough, he did for a grand salami. Two out, nobody on. A 1 1 pitch coming to Gaetti. And again, Glavin falls behind. He's been behind each hitter in this inning. Right. Sticks his bat out and dumps one into right. So a three hit first inning for the Cardinals against Glavin who at least during the regular season Bob has a tough time in the first inning an ERA over five but in the postseason an ERA of under one of the first inning that doesn't appear to be happening here today. Well the Cardinals are really they took advantage of his mistakes Ronnie Gant got the fastball over the heart of the plate Gary Gaetti although it wasn't a picture perfect swing he did what he had to do on a tough pitch on the outside corner right there. Mabry looks at ball one. Coming into this game, Tommy Glavin had not allowed a postseason run in the first inning in his last 11 starts. He's allowed two on the home run by Gant, and now a two out hit by Gaetti. And a 1 1 count on Mabry. A 28 pitch first inning for Glavin. And the Cardinals are making Glavin come a little bit closer to the zone anyway. He may never give in to the strike zone, but if you force him when he's behind in the count to at least come closer to the strike zone, be patient with him, you can get a pitch to hit. That caught the corner, according to Bob Davidson. And the count one and two. That's an interesting point, Bob, because while Tommy Glavin may be saying, stay stubborn, the hitters have to say, be patient. Absolutely. One on, two out. Yeah. Mabry drill. And Leo Mazzoni is going to come out and talk to Glavin, who has had a 29 pinch first inning, and he has struggled from the start. Gene Gieselman, the trainer of the Cardinals, out to talk to John Mabry. It looked like he got hit in his derriere. Let's see. Nope, hip. It was a little higher in his right hip. He appears to be all right. Looked like it hit him right on the belt line. We well, mentioned at the top of the show, Glavin has not had great success at Bush Stadium. Eight starts. He only got to the fifth inning four times. If he continues at this pace, he might not get to the fifth inning today. I used to kid Gene Gieselman about spraying that ethyl chloride on players when they got hit. Well, if you get hit on the derriere, that's one place you can't spray. <laughs> two on, two out. Glavin didn't hit a batter all year. And he hits Mabry here in the first inning. 
strike one to Pagnazzi, who could make it a very big first inning for St. Louis. 263 during the postseason, two out of eight in this series. Gaetti and Mabry aboard. And they all want to Pagnazzi. Good pitch, strike two. That pitch was actually right down the heart of the plate, but the way Pagnazzi reacted, you would have thought it was way inside. I think mentally, Pagnazzi is looking at the center of the plate being the outside corner. Yeah. Lavin has him 0 2. Now he goes outside, ball one. Well, if you're a right handed batter, you have to give him that pitch inside. You cannot protect. Both sides of the plate. And one thing a lot of people forget about Tom Glavin is he can rush it up there in the low 90s yeah. on occasion. That fastball inside gets up there very quickly. Trying to go the other way, and the count stays one and two. You may make an out, but if your approach is right when you're hitting, then you've had a good a good day or a good night or a good game. And so far, the Cardinals are taking a very intelligent approach against Clavin. Two runs home, two on, two out, first inning. To the right side, right at McGriff, and a long first inning for Glavin is over. Braves got one, Gantz, and the Cardinals get two. After one in St. Louis, game three, two to one.